And as we head into the new year, a new hope for a cleaner Tijuana River Valley could be on the horizon. Of course, this year, 2022, saw a record number of beach closures along the San Diego coast, largely because of the sewage coming in from Mexico. Well, several things are happening to clean that up. And KUSI's Dan Plant explains more now from Coronado. Yeah, good evening once again from Coronado Island, beautiful foggy Coronado Island, but it doesn't really matter how chilly or foggy it is out here. There is a warm sensation being felt all through the South Bay because of what's happening with the Tijuana sewage crisis. As you probably heard, the federal budget was signed such as it is, a lot of people complaining about it, but in that budget, there is $300 million that was approved three years ago, by the way, by Congress, that is now finally going to be heading to San Diego. So here we are in Coronado, of course. Um, over this summer, it has been closed a record number of days. In fact, there never was a day during the summer when Coronado Beach was closed. But last summer, it was closed, oh, one out of every four days because of a new testing system. But the bottom line, because of the sewage from Tijuana and our neighbors to the south. But the beach is open today. As you can see, the waves are pretty darn big as well. And it looks like more clean water days are ahead for us because a lot is happening with the Tijuana sewage crisis. Taken a long time to get to this point, taken a gnashing of teeth and, and lawsuits, all kinds of things to get to this moment. Uh, but we got a chance to catch up with the mayor of Coronado, who has been working very, very hard along with lots of other folks to get this done. Listen to this. So we've had three big developments this year, uh, specifically on the Tijuana sewage issue. Um, one, the federal agencies wrapped up their NEPA review, which is their big environmental review they have to do for all major projects. Uh, two, we had for the first time ever a major financial commitment from Mexico to the tune of approximately $150 million. And then the third development is just this week, through the compromised budget bill that was released, we had the transfer of funds, $300 million, from the EPA to the IBWC. So what that means is that the EPA has been the lead agency on this for the last couple years, but it's the IBWC, the International Boundary and Water Commission, that is now gonna be responsible for actually putting the shovel in the ground and starting to build these projects on the US side of the border. And the good news for everyone is that a shovel is expected to be in the ground sometime late in quarter two of 2023. So progress is being made. And I'm no longer cautiously optimistic, like I am ecstatic, I'm very optimistic that this is going to get done. So the good news is that you're going to start to see some of these larger projects start to come to fruition. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to take some time to develop, of course, but in addition to these larger projects that are probably two to three years away from completion, you're going to have some smaller projects that the IBWC and the EPA are already making headway on. So you're going to start to see the overall water quality start to improve in an incremental way. And then once the capacity of the wastewater treatment plant down on the U.S. side of the Mexican border is, is upgraded, once that's complete, you're going to start seeing a massive increase in the improvement in the water quality um, here in the South Bay. All right, back here in Coronado, as you can see, the waves are extremely large, particularly for Coronado. They don't often get that large, but the good part about it is not only the waves big, but they are clean today. Come on in, the water's fine. It is clean. Apparently, the Tijuana sewage has been contained down to the southern parts of the area, so uh, it's a nasty situation, as we know. But the good part is that it looks like help is finally on the way after, what, four decades of being dumped on by our neighbors to the south. Of course, we've already built a sewage treatment plant down there, which is going to be doubled in capacity as a result of this 300 million that's headed our way, but also 150 million from our neighbors to the south who also have promised a political commitment to actually get involved and try and do something and be a partner in cleaning up this situation instead of thumbing their nose at us as they have for the past, oh, 20 years or so and saying it's not our problem. Well, somehow they've been convinced it is their problem becomes our problem and now we're going to fix it. So 2023, it looks like it's going to bring some good news for the Tijuana sewage crisis. And I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of people who have worked very, very hard for a long, long time, going back 40, 50 years to get this done. And it looks like we're on the precipice, if you will. We're on the cusp of something good actually happening down in the Tijuana River Valley. The money's there. The political will's there. Now we got to get shovels in the ground. And there you go. So we're in Coronado with a little bit of good news as we head into the new year. We'll throw it back to you.